Thank you very much. We now move on to the next resolution, Resolution 10, Changing Places Toilets, and it will be proposed by Kirsten Oswald and seconded by Chris Prollock. Conference, when I decided I was coming to Aberdeen, it didn't need a lot of planning. I, I bought a train ticket and that was about it. I didn't think about what toilet facilities there would be on the journey or at the conference. It didn't cross my mind to wonder if there would be toilets that I could use, because there always are. But that's not everyone's experience. There are folk all over Scotland who do have to think before they leave the house about whether they can go out at all because they might not get access to the loo facilities that they need. Conference Changing Places Toilets are a toilet facility which, as well as a loo and a sink, has an adult changing bench, a hoist, and the space to manoeuvre about with a wheelchair. These are life-changing facilities for people with profound and multiple disabilities and conditions including cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, and many others. It's been estimated that about one in 260 people could need a changing places toilet. If that's right, that's equivalent to several people in this hall, except they won't be here because there isn't a loo. In fact, there are only 175 changing places toilets in the whole of Scotland. That's a tiny drop in the ocean when you realise there are 166 toilets in this building alone. Thankfully, the new Aberdeen Conference Centre will have these facilities, which is great, but so many buildings just aren't set up for someone who needs a fully accessible loo. I can't begin to imagine how restricting that must feel. And the same people affected might already be pushing against far too many barriers as they go about their lives. But not being able to use the loo, that's a pretty fundamental thing. Conference, our SNP government has done fantastic work on disability and inclusion, from making sure that social security has got dignity right at its heart, to protecting the disabled students' allowance from Tory cuts. There's no doubt that it's a real contrast to the shamefully hostile environment of the UK government, and making life so much harder for people than it needs to be in stripping away their dignity. And that's all the more reason that we need to press on the tales of people trying to get out and about despite the lack of these toilets are pretty stark. People deliberately and dangerously dehydrating themselves to try and avoid the issue. Children being changed on toilet floors. That's horrible. There's no sugar coating that. I wouldn't be lying down on a public toilet floor and neither should anybody else have to. And other people getting changed in the back seat of cars. And despite the very best efforts of families to protect the dignity of their loved ones, how can that be okay? None of us would want to do that. But most of us aren't faced with that dilemma of staying in all the time or finding a way, however difficult, to cope. Conference hearing all this, you'll understand how important it is that the SNP Scottish Government has already recognised Changing Places Toilets as key to its accessible travel programme and committed to making them available in buildings that our new social security agency will operate from. And I was truly over the moon last week when Kevin Stewart, our Minister for Local Government and Housing, announced that he intends to introduce Changing Places Toilets into Scottish building regulations for certain types of buildings. This is really brilliant news from the Scottish Government it's a really ambitious plan and it will make a huge difference. It's a bit of a game changer. But conference, we can go further and we should go further because we, the SNP, are ambitious for Scotland to be a better place for all of us to live. We can lead the world on this if we're willing to take bold action and find a way to work with building regulations, with councils and groups like PAMIS to deliver more changing places, toilets across the country in existing buildings and in more new ones. Because we need a network of changing places toilets that cover Scotland so everyone has the opportunity to get out and participate in whatever life has to offer. Imagine the barriers that we could break down if we had more changing places toilets in our colleges, sports facilities and public spaces. 
So if we're really serious about inclusion, conference, let's agree to go that step further. Let's work to deliver this. Let's make Scotland a truly inclusive country for everyone. Conference, please support this resolution. Thank you. Chris, to second, uh, to be followed by Von Russell, who will speak in favour of the resolution. Not a first time speaker, but second speech in 10 years, it says. I'm getting you used. <laughs> <clears throat> Scary looking at everybody there and following these amazing, powerful speeches for these women. I'm a bit of an emotional wreck before I even start this, so I apologise. Um, see you again. Um, Chris Prosek from the Bonnie Bridge and Denlon Head branch, um, and I speak with uh, investment in this because my son, well, one of my sons, is disabled. I see I've started already. Um, what I've done here is I've brought some pictures to kind of take you through our life. Um, first of all, I should say that I want to thank uh, the Eastwood branch for bringing this uh, resolution forward. Um, and I just want to help you illustrate to you what it's like, the importance of having these changing places toilets and not having them. And I'm glad that a speaker yesterday had props because I felt a bit nervous and I'd get shouted up for bringing these in. So, first one is a picture of my family. And for the people who can't see this, it's a picture of us at the circus, my wife Karen, my older son Logan, me and Rory at the far side. Um, Rory is six, and my older son is eight. Um, as I see, you can see Rory very well, so here's a picture of him when he was younger. And this is the awe moment. <laughs> always, always good to pull at the heartstrings. So when he was that age, um, very much he was cared for by society. He was born in 2011, and if the baby box had been around then, he would have got one of those as well. So we've already set precedent that our government and our party are a caring party. Um, we're a normal family, but we're not treated equally, um, because as Rory has gotten older, what we've found is we have to face this situation on a regular basis. He'd fall like a ball. If, if he was bothered, he'd kill me for showing this. This is a reality. Um, this is Rory lying on a toilet floor to be changed when he was away at a therapy session. It's tough as a parent. Um, but Kirsten said she wouldn't sit on a toilet floor or lie down. Well, you can't put the way in where you wouldn't go either. So I've got to do the same as well. And you'll find that parents are doing things like sitting in um, shop windows to highlight this issue. As I say, and you can see he was having a good haul of my nose. He thought that was funny. Um, so, yeah, as I say, as he's got older, society doesn't care for him just so much. So, so what's happened? Where, where has it gone? We're now forced to change him on toilet floors or in car boots, not due to his disability, but due to the design of society around him and others who need changing places. Uh, around 24 hours ago, John Swinney stood here and he said, equal in birth and equal in life. It suddenly doesn't feel like that to us as we are just now. Imagine as a parent being forced to choose between one son, my older son's mental health, when we have to leave our place early to, get, to make sure that we don't change Rory on a toilet floor, um, or staying for his welfare and having to compromise Rory's respect and dignity. We are lucky that Rory has other learning difficulties, and he isn't really that bothered, but we are. It runs counter to the concept of getting it right for every child and the scenario indicators of well-being. And I hope you understand why today's uh, resolution and your support is vitally important. Um, I want to take a moment to thank... Uh, oh, can I, is it OK to keep going for... Uh, that's the National Secretary, not me, that's touching the lights. Um, I, I'm quite happy for you to continue. I'm sure conference is as well. So. Very powerful. Th thank you for affording me that. Um, I want to th take a moment to thank Michael Matheson, um, Angus MacDonald, John McNally, Martin Day, all the Falkirk MPs and all the other ones who have taken the time to meet with us um, over the last two years. It's been my life for the last two years. Um, in fact, I'm sure Michael Matheson and his team are sick fed up with me. Um, I then want to go on and thank Kevin Stewart for taking the bold decision that the Westminster government doesn't have the, 
the drive to do, and parents down south are looking on in envy, I know that now, as to what's been, uh, what's been announced. However, I want to contextualise that as well. It's an, what's been announced is an important stepping stone towards inclusion. It is not a destination in itself. It will stop many new buildings coming into society without equal toilet provision, but it won't impact on existing buildings as far as I'm aware. And it's already been mentioned the AECC here today. I couldn't have brought my son to the creche because of the fact there was no toilets from public events, outdoor events. I don't think it would touch them as well. We were invited to the Queen's Ferry Cross opening last year. We went fully delight, had to change my son in the boot, uh, the boot of the car because there was nothing put in place. A crown jewel event and he wasn't even thought about. Um, and Rory's big thing is, is trains um, and train rolling stock. We're just bringing in a whole new stock of trains. These won't have the facilities for them either and these are going to be for many, many years. So we need to think about how we crack that nut as well. Um, so very much it is a case of um, a work in progress. I promise I'm nearly there. Um, in October 2016, our party leader and first minister told us, if you remember one word from my speech today, I want it to be this, inclusion. Inclusion is a guiding principle for everything we do. It encapsulates what we stand for as a party and it describes the kind of country we want Scotland to be. In closing, as we enter the second decade of power, then mean what we say and deliver what we say. Not because it's easy, but because it is the right thing to do and to, pr to, pr to prove to our disabled community, both young and older, that they are treated fairly and we care about their equality and inclusion. Now, I understand our limitations to what the Scottish Government can do, so if it doesn't hold the power, I'm calling on our 35 MPs to unite and take this battle to Westminster as well. Mine and other families don't want special treatment. We just want equal treatment. Please support the resolution. Thank you, Chris. I think we'll all agree that that was um, very powerful indeed. I will call uh, other speakers. Um, uh, Yvonne is next to speak in favour of the resolution. Uh, we will also hear from uh, the local government minister, um, Kevin Stewart, as well, because I think that's appropriate. But we'll try and call other speakers, and I'll also hand the chair over to Susan Aitken shortly as well. But welcome Yvonne Russell, who's also a first-time speaker at conference. Good afternoon, conference. My name is Yvonne Russell and I'm a member of the Lark Hall branch. Despite, thank you, <laughs> despite um, being a lifelong SNP supporter, I only joined our party about eight years or so ago when I realised what the Tories had planned for the disabled people. And I believed and I still believe that the SNP are the only party that will stand up for our disabled Scots. I'm at the other end of the spectrum, age-wise, from our previous speaker. My son, Alistair, is profoundly disabled, and he will be 30 next month. He was born six weeks prematurely in 1988 and weighed in at just over three pounds. He has microcephaly, no verbal speech, and he can't sign either, so he can't tell us what he's thinking. He has mobility issues. He has diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, which means he poos a lot, and he has epilepsy. He's doubly incontinent. He requires 24-hour support and he always, always will. I'm one of the fighting mums, so my son gets 24-hour support and I'm very, very grateful that I've got a son and not a wee child anymore because God help the ones that are coming after us. He can do nothing for himself, our boy. He functions at the level of a two-year-old, but he's happy and he's loved very, very much. He gets great joy from many things, things like you and I enjoy, such as music, going to the pictures, things like that. But you know, to this day, I remember the shock when my husband, who's a GP, 
replied to my despair at the lack of any progress that our wee boy was making in toilet training that there are some people who never gain control of their bladder and bowels and remain in nappies all their lives. What? thought I. Surely not. Well, 30 years on, probably with another 30 maybe to go and having changed 8 to 10 pads a day in each of those 30 years, I certainly believe my husband now and sometimes he does know what he's talking about. <laughs> Conference, you'll understand why this resolution is personal. As a family, we need to use a changing places toilet. Our son attends a wonderful day centre in Lanark, which was recently built, and so it's got all the facilities that he needs. But in his daily life, accessing a changing places toilet isn't easy. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. We've already heard that there's no changing places toilet here. The nearest one is in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary, which is about 2.8 miles away. Our son shops in Asda and Hamilton, but if he needs a pad changed, he'd either have to go home to Lark Hall, which is about five miles, or go to Strathclyde Park, 2.3 miles. Many supermarkets refuse to accept that their profound and multiply disabled customers require the dignity of a, pl a changing places toilet. If our son needs a, a pad change whilst he's at the riding for the disabled in Glasgow, they don't have one. He has to go 2.8 miles to the nearest changing places toilet in Bears Den. Or a 30-year-old adult could lie on the dirty toilet floor. Going on holiday is problematic. It's getting better with more changing places toilets at motorway service stations as long as you poo when you're in the vicinity of one of them. But airports are just a nightmare. More railway stations are installing our toilets. I think, I believe, the new Dundee station is going to have one thanks to the new, all the campaigning by PAMIS, who have supported our family for many, many years and who have championed changing places toilets. PAMIS have recently acquired a mobile changing places toilet called the PAMILU, which allows our families to participate in events and days out, like beach days. Last night, they had a visit to Edinburgh Zoo. Things that you and I take for granted because we can just go to the toilet, which are not easy if you have to lie someone down to be changed. Changing places toilets being installed in public accessible buildings could mean the difference between a life of social isolation and exclusion through a lack of necessary facilities to a life of social inclusion just because you can access a suitable toilet like others. But it's not just about learning disabilities. Toileting issues can affect us all. You could have an accident and suffer a brain or spinal injury. A substantial number of you here today could go on to develop dementia or a stroke and so require, with your personal, require help with your personal bodily functions. Could you start to wind up now? Yep, Thank necessitating you. a changing places toilet. Conference, as a mother of an adult with profound disabilities, I asked my fellow delegates, would you be happy to lay your baby down on the dirty floor of a public toilet to change their nappy or would you lie down on a dirty floor? Again, like everyone else, I listened to John Swinney yesterday saying that we want an equal Scotland, equal from birth and then equal in life, that the SNP must work to make Scotland a fairer and more equal country. Fellow delegates, I ask you to give my son and his friends the dignity and equality in accessing changing places toilets that they deserve, and I ask you to support this resolution. Thank you. Councillor Kirstine Curry to speak for the motion, to be followed by Lindsay Johnson. Good afternoon, Conference. I'm fast becoming the councillor for public toilets in the north, actually. Uh, unfortunately, Highland Council have made a decision now that they are closing public conveniences throughout the Highlands. Uh, this is because of budget cuts. Uh, and apparently, it's all our fault in the SNP. 
I find this quite frustrating, as is our group, and we spend most of our time trying to sort things out for our constituents and for the most vulnerable people uh, who come and visit our beautiful, beautiful area. Unfortunately, most of what we say falls on deaf ears. But the point I want to make about changing places' toilets is getting in government involvement in this, and I understand we're going to hear from the minister in a minute, would just be so fantastic. Because right now, public toilets are not even a statutory obligation of local government to provide. So making it a law that you have to provide toilets, you have to give our friends and visitors and our local people an opportunity to enjoy themselves, to um, connect with others, to go about their daily lives, it's so important. It's actually a human right. It's not fair that people are having to live this horrible life experience of being changed on a toilet floor purely because we didn't think. And that's the second part of what I want to talk about is we didn't think. For the vast majority of us, we haven't got this invaluable experience that we've heard from our friends this afternoon and from this morning from the internal session as well. We don't have that lived experience. But actually, it doesn't take much to involve ourselves and learn about it. A few years ago, I worked out in uh, North America and I worked at a camp for children and adults who were disabled. And I had uh, many, many children in front of me who were disabled uh, and total assist is what we, we called them out in Canada. So they needed help with absolutely everything. And you know what? They climbed trees. It was difficult. Uh, we got them hiking up mountains with uh, fully accessible wheelchairs that can go up mountains. Uh, we piggybacked them back to the fully accessible toilet if we were camping out overnight because we could. And the opportunities that these young people and young adults in particular had during the week that they were with us was the highlight of their year. They were just beside themselves with joy and happiness, doing things that the rest of us kind of take for granted, actually. And that was all because they had the facilities. They had a toilet. It boiled down to as simple as that. We don't all understand disabilities, and, and people who are disabled don't always necessarily understand everybody else's disabilities, too. But this levels the playing field and allows everyone to live in an inclusive Scotland. Thanks. Lindsay Johnson, to be followed by Kevin Stewart, MSP. And Lindsay's a first time speaker at conference. Good afternoon, conference. My name is Lindsay Johnson, and I come from the Dingwall and Black Isle branch. We all take it for granted being able to go and spend a penny when we're out and about. Most people prefer their own loo at home, but that shouldn't be people's only option. Using a public toilet, even an accessible one, is sometimes just not possible. Whether it's an er elderly person with incontinence, a physically disabled person with a restriction, or what about a teenager with learning difficulties who's still soiling? Changing and cleaning anybody on a public bathroom floor is unhygienic, it's degrading. And on top of that, it's hard work for the person who's looking after them. Knowing that you can't count on or access appropriate facilities makes life difficult. It makes life difficult for families across Scotland and it contributes to the isolation of the family and the carer burning out. In Highland, which is the largest geographic local authority in Scotland, I had a look on the Changing Places website last night and it listed seven Changing Places toilets. Just think about that for a second. Seven changing places toilets in an area almost the size of Belgium. There's three in schools, two in leisure centres, one in a care setting, and one at Inverness Airport. So out of all that seven, there's actually only three that are really publicly accessible. Think about that. Three toilets. You don't have to see why it's a problem. Changing places toilets are expensive. Compared to an average accessible toilet, they cost between 12 and 15,000 pounds. However, they make a world of difference to the people who need them. And in this ongoing age of Westminster austerity, councils in Highland are closing public toilets, 
and facilities. We need to think about everybody. As Gandhi said, a nation's greatness is measured by how it treats its weakest members. Building and planning regulations are a relatively easy way to ensure new build public and community buildings are as inclusive as possible, giving everybody in society the dignity and respect that they deserve. But that's just the start, isn't it? We need to think about how we make existing buildings fit for purpose. But that's for another day. However, I hope, Conference, that you will support this resolution. Thank you. And Kevin Stewart, MSP, Minister for Local Government and Housing. Kevin will be the last speaker in this debate. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Conference, and I congratulate Eastwood Branch for bringing forward this motion here today. Um, and I'd like to pay special tribute to the campaigners uh, from Pamas, um, who are there to keep us all on our toes uh, and to get this right uh, for people um, across the country. Uh, we've heard a lot today about dignity, fairness, and respect. Uh, and those three words, dignity, fairness, and respect, uh, first came into law in Scotland as an amendment to the Scottish Welfare Fund uh, Bill, uh, which was put through Parliament by Margaret Burgess, uh, and I was pleased that that amendment was in my name. Uh, and I will always fight for dignity, fairness and respect for all. <laughs> We've been asked a number of questions today. Um, and, you know, if uh, you had a, a son like Rory, would you be happy to change him in the toilet floor? And the answer from everyone would be a resounding no, I am sure. Uh, and we must do better in this regard. Um, but this is not just about the actions that I have taken, which I'll talk about in a little while. It's also about the actions of my ministerial colleagues too. Um, because many of them have been involved in recent times with PAMAS and helping us get to the place where we're about to embark on and beyond. Uh, and I would pay tribute also to Jean Freeman, uh, to Maureen Watt, to Marie Todd, to Shirley Ann Somerville, and to Hamza Youssef for helping me in this regard. Uh, plaudits uh, to these guys too. So, <laughs> we recognise as a government the benefits that changing places, toilets, uh, and other facilities bring to the lives of those people with pr profound and multiple disabilities uh, and the impact that that has uh, on their families and their carers. So I have instructed building standards officials uh, to look at changing, changing building standards regulations so that new buildings, large shopping centres, hospitals, leisure centres, particularly swimming pools, uh, large stadia and arenas, schools, and creating a future uh, proofing space so that we can get this right. Uh, my officials are doing that now. We will consult on that. We will look at the impact assessments and we will bring this forward as soon as possible. But as we have heard, um, <laughs> it's not just about new buildings. It's about existing buildings. And I hope that some of the folk out there heard what Yvonne had to say earlier on about going to the supermarket. Because a lot of large companies could do this now. They would attract new customers if they had these facilities. It is the right thing to do. And my plea to you is to listen to what has been said today and see if you can fit a changing places toilet in your building. That will be to your benefit and to the benefit of your customers. Obviously, obviously, in all of us, we also have uh, local authorities to play a role. Um, I'd like to pay tribute to East Ayrshire Council, a small local authority 
with 18 changing places toilets because they have put in the effort uh, into providing these facilities. Fife is another good example with 28, but there are so many authorities that could do so much better. And I will work with colleagues in COSLA, including Elena Whitham as the spokesperson, to try and get local authorities to do more. Uh, you can be assured that we will try to get dignity, uh, fairness and respect for all. And my colleagues and I will do all that we can to bring more changing places toilets to Scotland. Thank you. Conference, there are no cards in against in this resolution. Can we agree it by acclaim?